Hello, I'm Brian Cole, and I'm sitting with Jack Farr, and he and I are going to discuss advances in allograft treatment, including Artiform. Brian, we've got a new option available to us. Uh, many times, at least in my past, the availability of osteochondral fresh allograft, it's there, we can, we can get it on a routine basis, but we can't get it on a specific date. So now we have this new option of cryopreserve uh, in the Cardiform technique. Um, what, what is Cardiform in your mind? Yeah, so the way I envision it, having worked with it, is it's a three-dimensional uh, sheet of articular cartilage now with a very, very microscopically thin layer of bone, which intuitively makes sense. So you could call it osteochondral allograft. Yeah, so, you know, from the obvious uh, uh, similarity perspective, it's just like an osteochondral allograft, um, except there's technical di differences, obviously. So this is more of a surface treatment. Um, I like it because it works in surfaces that are concave or convex or more or complex such as the patellofemoral joint. Like you say, it, from a timing perspective, it's uh, very easy to use, but it has um, viable cells. Uh, we know that it interacts favorably with MSCs, and it's a three-dimensional living graft that's cryopreserved, which if you think about the old data and cryopreservation, this probably has the best, best cell viability that we've seen in any preservation technique uh, other than fresh. Yeah, the laboratory data would suggest a, approximately a 70% cell viability. Um, Jimmy Cook had some recent data showing the viability of uh, osteochondral grafting, and this was in an animal model, but still showed below 60% cell viability that grafts didn't do as well as those with higher rates. So I think c c cells are certainly important for an osteochondral allograft. Right. So um, maybe just you could mention some of the advances with fixation and uh, from a couple of the technical pearls that uh, can help others. Well, use we'll this start technique. off with the base. Then um, we'd like to have a strong base, so we we want to keep violation of the base minimal. Um, right now, they're still looking at the two arms of technique. One is some type of marrow stimulation, whether it's drilling, as we've talked discussed earlier, or actually formal marrow stimulation, where I think people are leaning away from that. Um, some of the work that Lanny Johnson did showed that if done properly, a very superficial abrasionoplasty can actually uh, perform quite well. So I've sort of leaned towards that technique for preparation of the base. As far as fixation, we'd certainly like to have, because we're thinking about bone-to-bone -bone fixation, we want to have rigid fixation. So I'm using suture anchors to rigidly bring this construct down to the basilar tissues. Yeah, so um, when it sits flat, say in the patella, uh, generally pretty easy to do and you can use peripheral suture anchors, uh, small suture tack, I've used the knotless suture tack, especially when you're dealing with a concavity of the trochlea to try to hold this uh, 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 graft in position. And then um, we're working on some advances that will hopefully be available soon to sort of almost stitch the graft down into place. The bottom line is uh, you don't want it to dislodge. We're dependent upon uh, retention of the graft. So if whether you use sutures in the periphery, small suture anchors, small suture anchor in the center, uh, has to be done correctly and you're trying to avoid any edge effects that the graft may be proud that could otherwise uh, catch on an opposing surface. We're still working on uh, our case series at the present time, but certainly early reports from uh, multiple different surgeons have, have reported you know, short-term, medium-term uh, good results. Uh, certainly we have some post-operative MRI follow-ups demonstrating fill, and what I mean by fill is these constructs are only about 1.5, maybe to 2.5 millimeters thick, and I'm putting them into a patella that's five to six millimeters, and at a one-year follow-up MRI, it's re-expanded to that full thickness yeah. of the surrounding articular cartilage. So that also uh, supports the, the potential use for this. Thank you.